I hope I am audible. And yes. Uh, yes. Yes. So in yesterday's session, we talked about communication skills. What exactly is communication? And we tried to understand the difference between communication and language. And uh, I said yesterday, language is a medium of communication. So being able to use English in verbal communication is considered a very important skill around the world in modern times. English is accepted as a global language. There are more people who use English in India than the countries where it is native language. The native speakers, if you see, compare the number of native speakers with the number of people who use English as a second language, or we call it a library language, the number is far more greater. So this simply proves that a large number of people all over the world have acquired this language. They can speak, they are using this language as a tool, as a medium. They can express themselves, carry out their business and transactions using English. So this tells us that yes, it is possible to acquire English language. It's not difficult. If so many people around the world are using this language effectively, that means there is nothing that can stop us from acquiring this language. Now, we are going to think about the ways to learn English. How can we learn English effectively? And we will also talk about the hurdles. The hurdles in acquiring English. We will talk about some very effective methods of acquiring English, learning English. So let's first begin to think about why is it easy to learn English? I think the very first thing that we need to tell ourselves is that it is possible to learn English at any age in life. It is not a, what we say, rocket science. And many people have that dread, that fear in mind, that complex in mind about this language. We look at English as a foreign language, but I would like to tell here, English is no longer a foreign language. The reason is we see English is being used by us here in India as the first language, as the language of communication in offices and in businesses. So why do we consider it as a foreign language? I must tell you, I never went to UK or any other country where English is used as a first language or a native language. I never went to any such country. I have learned this language here. In my country, in my state, I could learn this language, acquire this language. So why should I look at it as a foreign language? Because we see when we look at English as a foreign language, there is kind of uh, we say complex in our mind and that stops us from learning the language, from using the language. So let us think why is it easy to learn English these days? It was never so easy. You can see the title. It was never so easy to learn a foreign language, to learn English in particular. The reason is acquiring language, learning a language is a natural ability of human beings. If you were born in some other country and not in India, you would have been speaking the language of that land. So we naturally acquire a language. Like kids, they do not study any grammar. They do not study any rules. They do not have to refer to dictionaries to learn a language. We speak Marathi here 
the kids in our families learn to speak Bharati without any class. They just simply listen to the language and acquire it. They imitate, they copy and they acquire it. They speak and they acquire it. This is a well-known thing. Everybody knows, all the participants here. We all know that we can learn a language very easily and naturally if we are in that kind of surrounding. Right? So learning a language is a natural ability. If it is a natural ability, why do we worry about it? We just need to know the process, the natural process of acquiring the language and we will be there. We will be using it. We will be comfortable with it. The second reason why it is very easy to learn English is we have abundant resources around us. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, there were not many things that will ex that could expose us to this language, that could give exposure to this language. But today we see we have very easy access to newspapers, to radio, TV, social media, where English is used very frequently. And so we will get access to the material that is required, the resources that are required to learn the language. So it is far more easy than it was in the past. So we must not have that fear in mind. If we are willing to learn the language, it is possible to acquire the language. The next reason why it is so easy to learn English these days is that we have got access to technology. We are all using mobile phones, we are using internet. We are using audio and video devices very easily. I remember when I was in school, audio and video devices were a novelty. It was something out of reach. Today I can record myself and listen how I speak. That will help me to know where exactly I need to improve, I need to focus. So the access to technology, the easy access to technology facilitates learning of English. The next thing is a large number of people, I just mentioned it before some time, they have mastered the language. And if it was possible for them to use this language, to learn this language, to master this language, yes, it is possible for us. Because we are human beings, and as I said, it is our natural ability. You do not require spatial intelligence to learn a language. Anyone who has understanding of like, like common things around can definitely learn the language. The next thing that makes learning English easy is that effective techniques of learning this language are available. No other language has been researched as much as English. You see, people around the world are busy finding ways and techniques that will help learners acquire this language easily. So there are effective and established practices and techniques of learning English. You will not find such resources of any other language so easily, such techniques of any other language easily than English. So why do we worry? We just wish to, if we have a desire, a strong and burning desire to learn the language, it is possible. And it is possible at any age in life. The next reason that I have listed, why is it easy to learn English, to learn any, any foreign language these days? The next reason is globalization. Now, because of this process of globalization, we are more in connection with people around the world. So you are not able to listen and speak or interact with the native speaker of English before this. Today, you can do that. There are multiple platforms on which you can search for people who will interact with you. I know of a, an application that allows us to interact with native speakers. And they are doing it simply at a very low cost or uh, at no cost. So free of cost, we are getting to interact with native speakers of English. It is because of globalization that we are able to get access 
to the resources that I've mentioned here. The next reason I have listed is a large number of training institutes are available. It was not that easy to find the training institute that will, that will help you to improve your language skills before. Today, it is possible. Sitting in the place where you are, you can search online for the institutes, the best institutes in the world, which can provide you the courses in language. And that is why it is so easy to learn English or any other foreign language these days. So there is nothing that can stop us if we just have the burning desire, I said. And that's for any other skill. Whatever we wish to learn, if we have a strong desire in heart, we will find ways and we will overcome. If there are hurdles, we can overcome the hurdles. So one thing I would say is required if you wish to learn English is that burning desire, that strong desire. So let's see what are the natural steps of learning English. You can see in the next slide, I have listed only four points, but they are very important. How do we learn a new language? Let's think about it. Any language. Maybe English, French, Spanish, Marathi, Hindi. How do we learn the language? The first thing is we listen the language. Unless we listen, we cannot acquire any language. So this tells us exactly what we can do to learn the language. If you want to acquire English, you will have to listen. And as I said, it is so easy to listen to this language in the days of technology, in the days of phones and internet, we have easy access. We can get that exposure and uh, listen to that language. The next thing is we imitate. Now imitation simply means copying. And here I would like everyone to recall how you acquired your mother tongue. And you can observe, if you are not able to recall, you can observe around you, there are kids who learn their mother tongue. As I said, they do not refer to any dictionary. They do not learn any grammar. They simply listen to what their parents are saying and they try to copy, they imitate. And this is how they learn the language very quickly. Two-year-old, three-year-old child can speak the language very effectively can communicate what the child wants to say. Then comes an age when the child learns to ask a very important question. And that question is, what do we call this particular thing? In Marathi, I will say, yala kai mantat. Till that point, we may say the child depends on Imitation. But after that, once the child learns to ask the question, Yala Kai Mantar, the child learns very fast, acquires the language very quickly. Because every time the child asks a question, he gets an answer. He remembers the thing. He remembers the name. And he keeps on adding to his vocabulary. So this brings us to a very effective and natural technique. See, if we are doing things in an unnatural way, we will have to focus more. We'll have to, uh, what we say, uh, put in a lot of efforts and energy. But if we go by the natural way, things happen pretty easily. And I can tell you from my own experience, when I was in school, speaking English was a really difficult thing for me. I had never imagined that I would ever be able to speak English. But then it was because we were using very difficult methods, unnatural way of learning English. I would say translation method is that unnatural way, unnatural method of learning English. When we translate a language, it becomes more difficult. So I was saying, dear students, dear friends, that we can simply imitate, copy, learn to speak the language very effectively. The next thing is we read the language and we can learn the language of the books. Now, each profession has its vocabulary. 
I might not know the terms that doctors use. And doctors might not know the terms that engineers use. So we can simply read the material in uh, what we say are uh, the particular subject topic in which we wish to acquire or of which we wish to acquire the language. We can simply read the material and learn. And the next thing is to write. These are, you know what, they call it LSRW techniques. And it is very commonly known. Okay, if we follow these steps, LSRW, that is, we listen to the language, we listen as much as possible, we speak, unless we speak, we are not going to retain it. We might listen a lot many things, but we are not able to retain everything that we listen. We are able to retain some part of what we listen. So it is necessary to speak because when we speak, we are able to retain the things that we have heard, that we have listened to. Reading is an important thing I said and writing. Now, I would like to give you a few instructions or I would like to give some advice, like what you can do to listen more. We have access to various websites and uh, YouTube. We can simply go on YouTube and search for the topic of our interest. Maybe we are interested in movies. We are interested in like uh, uh, actors and actresses. Some of us are interested in sports, some like politics. So we can search for the material in which we have interest. We can then play the videos, watch the videos, listen attentively. Now, when we are interested in a particular subject, we are more prone, I would say, to retain the information, understand and comprehend the information. So we can simply search for the material of our interest and listen. The next thing is imitate or speak. Now it is very, this is the trickiest part I would say. Many students who come to me who complain, so we are very afraid of speaking. Now the reason they are afraid of speaking is they are conscious when they speak. The greatest hurdle, and I have listed it in my next slide, is what people will say. And this stops us from using the language. So what we can do is we can form a group, the like-minded people who want to learn the language. We can come together and we can decide that in a specific time of the day, we will interact only in English. This will give us the chance to speak the language. Apart from that, we can definitely, uh, uh, whenever we think, we can think loudly and we can record whatever we are thinking. Later on, we can listen to it. It is very interesting activity and it gives us the confidence that we can speak. And there's no fear, right? Like when we are recording ourselves, no one is there around us. If, we are, if you have that fear in mind, that what people will think about me, you can simply record yourself and later on listen to it. It will also give you a chance to look at your weaknesses and improve them. Reading. Now, this is very important thing. What, we, what should we read? If I want to learn really good English and tomorrow I sit with Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice in hand, I will leave reading the book after 10 minutes. The reason is the language is really tough. So not every learner can read every book. So we must know at what level of learning the language we are and accordingly we have to select the kind of books we would like to read. Now, there are some websites that will help us to know the kind of books that will help each at each level of learning. And we need to know at what level of learning we are. We all are at different levels of learning this language. Some of us may, may know the basic language. Some of you, some of us may be at intermediate level of learning this language. Some of us may be at advanced level of learning the language. But as I say, the, the ladder of excellence is never ending. I cannot say, okay, now I know this language. I do not need to learn it. I'm also a learner. And I'm taking efforts constantly to acquire this language, to like uh, acquire better pronunciation and to learn different accents of the language. 
because i am a teacher i will have to do that the whole of my life but if you just want to acquire this language for communication just don't need to worry read the material that suits your level maybe you will be interested in reading the more you read the better you get and writing it can be done very easily most of us write diaries so we can do one thing from tomorrow instead of writing the diary in our mother tongue we can start writing a page in english because we wish to learn english so we can start writing a page or we may write a blog if we are not interested in writing diary because many people i uh, think it is a monotonous job like i'm just trying to recall what i did throughout the day and writing after a few days it gets boring and then we stop so you can think of writing in sub in the subject of your interest so that will keep you going you see consistency matters if you want to do anything in life you will have to take consistent efforts if you give up after a few days like after this lecture tomorrow you decide to do several things that i have said here and you do it for one week and forget after that it is not going to bring any results you will have to take efforts over a period of time and then only you will be able to see the result so i would say these are these are this is the natural way of learning the language if we follow these steps we are going to acquire it easily having discussed it i would like to talk about the hurdles because if we know the hurdles we can do something to overcome them so the first thing and the greatest hurdle in learning english is the fear of being judged whenever we open our mouth we think we get conscious what do we think we think what others might say if i make a mistake i hope i am audible if we make a mistake we get stuck at that point and then there is an easy way we shift to our mother tongue and that stops us from learning english see if we are not using it we are losing it and the fear that people will judge me stops us from using the language we do not use it and then we lose it the next reason the next hurdle in learning the language is the attitude towards the language and what do i mean to say when i say the attitude i mean to say we look upon english speaking as an art rather than looking at it as a tool english language is a tool that helps us to express ourselves but when we look at it as an art because most of us like they think if i am able to speak english like this person who speaks really well then only i will open my mouth now if you say tomorrow the day i'll be able to sing like lata mangeshkar i'll open my mouth and start singing you will never learn singing i hope you are getting this comparison this analogy if you want to acquire the art as good as someone else you will have to take efforts to learn that art the same thing is about learning english but the first thing i would say is looking at it as an art stops us from speaking so we don't have to be perfect in the beginning we just have to speak we are bound to make mistakes but mistakes will teach us we may go wrong but we just need to be able to convey what we we feel if we are able to do that definitely we'll take efforts constantly over a period of time and we will overcome the mistakes or the errors but uh, we do not need to wait till the day you will we will acquire that fine fantastic fluent english you do not need to keep waiting till that day you just need to start using it today you will Im improve over a period of time and it is a natural thing it is bound to happen even if you do not wish to you it will happen if you are using a language you will definitely get better at it the next thing is trying to be right all the time i would say this 
uh, point is somewhat similar to the previous time point. Many a times we get conscious self awareness. The next point I have listed. This self awareness shuts our brain. Like while I'm talking with you all, if I start thinking whether I'm saying it the right way or not, I will not be able to say what I want to say the next. So I must stop thinking whether I'm saying it right or not. I just need to take efforts to tell I what, what I wish to tell. Then and then only I'll be able to move ahead. Otherwise, I'll get stuck at a point. When we become self-aware, or self-conscious, our brain shuts, and then we are no longer able to listen to people to react in a logical manner. We are no longer able to think coherently and logically and say things that we have planned to say. On the other hand, if we are not self-aware, we are constantly thinking and focusing on the subject about which we are talking. And then you will find that we are able to convey whatever we wish to say very easily. So I think these are the hurdles. Becoming aware of the hurdles also helps to improve the language. Having discussed the hurdles, I would like to go ahead and talk about a few things that we can do very quickly to improve English language. And you can see I have listed here only one point and that is learn to unlearn. So it is necessary to learn a new thing. But regarding English, one thing we must do is unlearn a few things that we have acquired because we have always looked at it as a second language. So this translation method, I would say it, it uh, is the uh, what can we call it? Uh, this translation methods plays spoiled sport all, all the time. It is something that stops us from using the language effectively. So learn to unlearn. There must be a lot many things that we use in a wrong manner. Words, vocabulary, pronunciation, a large number of things are wrong. The reason we have learned it in school and the wrong things that we'll see, a lot many people when they start practicing something that is wrong, the wrong becomes right. Okay, so it is very essential to learn to unlearn, to identify whether there are errors in what we are speaking. And I think it is essential to know the errors because once you have corrected your errors, you will be able to speak confidently. There'll be no fear in mind. Most of the time, the fear that I am saying something wrong stops me from saying it, right? So if there is no fear in my mind, I have already uh, made it clear or understood it uh, very clearly, I will not be self-conscious. So it is necessary to know what are the errors, the common errors. I have listed here a few examples. We can see here, there are a few expressions which are commonly, uh, expressions or sentences in English in which we commonly make mistakes. So you can see it, read it before I'm saying it. I would read it definitely, but you can go through it. I hope the screen is visible. I saw a dream. Yes. Many a times we say because it is a translation. Mia swapna bagitla. And the translation it is I saw a dream. It is an error. It is incorrect to say I saw a dream. We should say I had a dream. So we have a dream. We do not see a dream. In English, it is different. Both are different languages. Translation method is not going to help us. As I said, it is my own experience. I have uh, not been able to acquire this language for, I, I hope I'm audible. The, there was an instruction on the, there was a notification on the screen that the internet connection is unstable. I hope I'm audible. So I was saying uh, that I had myself experienced the translation method stops us from learning effectively. So let's go through all these expressions 
we try to we don't have that much time but and i have included a lot many such expressions we do not say revert back or reply back please reply back no it is wrong to say we must say please reply we do not say many a time times we think it is correct to say many times or many a time but these are very common things we make these mistakes knowingly or unknowingly we can't help simply because we have learned these things and that's why i said it is necessary to unlearn we do not say i am a 19 year old boy we say i am a 19 year old boy do not have to say years the next set of expressions is i did a mistake do not do the mistake no we must say we make the mistake we do not do a mistake we make a mistake cope up with something instead of saying that we should cope up with something we must say we cope with some cope with an issue cope with a problem the next word is lose now these both words are there in english but the first one is an adjective something is lose it is an adjective the word lose we know its noun form loss is lose and we go wrong in writing this word dispose of o w l we do not say dispose of we say we dispose of things emphasize on instead of using this word emphasize uh, this preposition on with emphasize we just say we must emphasize on certain things then this is a construction the next uh, the next expression can be seen here it is a, actually a structure or construction many people use although and but in the same sentence although i was tired but i conducted the lecture it is wrong i must say although i was tired i conducted the lecture so although and but cannot be used in the same sentence then give an exam and take an exam i see this is a very common error and even after explaining it to my students i have seen students keep on making this error because it is translation they are when they are saying that i am going to give the exam or i can't give the exam tomorrow we never say that we give an exam we must say i am taking an exam we take a test the institute or the teachers give the test and students take the test the next expression that is commonly mistaken is anyways i have heard many people using anyways it should not be anyways it should be anyway then uh anyway is repeated here you need not, not to do something we often say you need not to worry about it instead we should say we need not worry about it comprise of i see it is used even in written english even in written english of is very often used with comprise so we should not say that something comprises of something else we should say it comprises something else the next construction is uh, me and my friends if you are involved in something you must say my friends and i not me and my friends my brother and i not me and my brother there are a lot many expressions like this we can go on like talking about this errors and i would suggest uh, we can uh, get hold of a good book uh, there are a lot many books you can search online we can just type common errors in english i think if we we will not be making those mistakes and we will be more confident so you can just type on the google or you can search it on amazon uh, the common errors in english you will get a number of books there you can purchase one and just go through it once i think it will definitely help you so uh, there are a few things the instructions uh, 
that I have listed here. The first of these is don't worry about accent. Many a times we get stuck. We feel that inferiority complex when we hear someone speak better. So we feel, I can't speak as good as this person. The person speaks very fluently. So what is fluency? People say that accent is fluency, but it is not true. If you are able to say what you feel and what you think, you are speaking fluent, fluent English. So fluency is not about accent. You see, people from different countries have the accent. Americans have a different accent. Australians have a different accent. Although English is a native language in these countries, their accent is different from the British accent. So what? Why should we, if we keep worrying about our accent, we are not going to get rid of that fear, that self-consciousness, we are not going to improve ourselves. Then focus on learning English as an Indian language. Yes, I say it is an Indian language because I never came across any foreigner or native speaker. I learned English here in my school, here in my place. I would look at it as an Indian language. We speak so many languages. And you see, when we look at English as a foreign language, and then we have some reserves, like acquiring a foreign language will, uh, uh, like, uh, it will be an encroachment on my culture, this kind of belief. It is not going to be. We all are proud of our culture. And if we are proud of our culture, yes, if we are proud of our language, we should be able to use our language very well. And I would say when I'm speaking in Marathi, I should be able to speak good Marathi. Marathi bolta na mala shuddha Marathi bolta alo paiji. The same way if I'm speaking English, I should be able to speak good English. But I don't have to be as good as the native speakers because it is not the language of the native speakers only. It is the language of uh, our people as well. We have acquired it, accepted it. Like we have accepted the uh, European uh, uh, dress style, right? So we do not say that I'm wearing an English dress today. We do not say that I'm eating English food today. We, we just simply consider it as a dress or food. Simply we have to accept the language. So that attitude also will help us to improve English. Next is do not use translation method. I think three or four times I have repeated this instruction because I know this method plays the spoiled sport, I said. A lot many people out there find it difficult to learn English only because they are still using the translation method. When we are using the translate, translation method, we are actually closing the door, I would say. If you stop using the translation method, you will close the door that easy way, but you will uh, compel the learner to use that language. That will definitely help. And many institutes, I know there are here in Nasik, there are English institute, and uh, they are teaching English in Hindi or Marathi. So I have a strong objection to this. If anyone comes to you and says that I'm going to teach you English, but I will use teach it in Marathi or Hindi, do not believe that person because 50 years of your, your life you invest, you will not be able to learn any English from that person. If the person is using uh, Hindi or Marathi or any other language to teach English. So we must learn the language as the first language. Then and then only we are going to improve. Next thing is learn to pronounce English sounds. I think this can help us to get rid of that fear of being vernacular. If you really want to improve your sound, see, language is a system of sounds. And we all have different sounds in our languages. So in English, it is not t, but t. So we must know that difference. So we'll be able to pronounce table as a table. Not it much. I would say if you get your pronunciations right, it will definitely give your confidence, give you that confidence, boost your confidence. And if anything boosts our confidence, we must do it. We must take focused efforts. Then 
know the correct pronunciation of words now there are a lot many websites out there there are a lot many youtube channels out there we can simply go and focus on the pronunciation of words i must tell a lot many words are pronounced in an incorrect manner and uh, i think if we get it right this is going to boost our confidence right so we must take efforts to know what the correct pronunciation of the word is uh, i would say ki a lot many people pronounce this word pronoun pronunciation as pronunciation that is incorrect and if i know that the pronunciation of the word pronunciation is pronunciation i am not going to be worried about it it will not make me conscious it will make me confident so we should do that next is select proper material as per your level of understanding i think i talked about it i gave the example of a book uh, shakespeare's book if i start reading i'm i don't know the basics of english and tomorrow i sit with merchant of venice and i say ki i'm going to learn english is not going to happen we should select appropriate material books that we uh, are interested in that we understand that we can finish till the end we should select that material a lot many tests out there will help us to know our level of understanding whether we know basic english or intermediate level or we are at advanced level you see we all are at different levels i said and we all have a lot to learn so we should take efforts next uh, yes i have included here some commonly mispronounced words and uh, i would also suggest see this uh, uh, uh words i have got from uh, an application i use it pinterest uh, many of uh, the students the participants uh, must be acquainted with it so on pinterest you can get a lot many such resources about learning english see a uh, lot many words are given here and uh, let me see let me check if we have time enough to discuss this so you see uh, the commonly mispronounced words um divorce we call it divorce very often epitome now epitome is perfect example of something we call it epitome and uh, as i said before sometime when uh, something the wrong becomes right so if someone comes and calls epitome uh, says epitome uh, people will say this person is speaking wrong because we know the pronunciation pronunciation is epitome so we must be careful about it then foxpa now this word is very often pronounced as fox pass so it is not fox pass it is foxpa which is a very you may say error in etiquette foxpa is an error in etiquette i have included a lot many words a uh, lot many people say uh, film so we it should be pronounced as film uh, flower we are we pronounce it as floor but it is a different word it should be pronounced as flower uh, we pronounce this word as a gauge which should be pronounced as gauge we pronounce the next word which you can see here is as uh, we pronounce it as genre uh, we should pronounce it as genre hyperbole we pronounce it as hyperbole it should be hyperbole uh, ingenuity that's what we say but it should be ingenuity ingenuity a uh, lot many words i have listed here itinerary we call it itinerary or itinerary but it should be itinerary uh, many people say jewelry we should call it jewelry many people say jewelry jewelry they call it jewelry it should be jewelry next is uh, you can see many people pronounce this word as lingerie it should be pronounced as laundry so i have included some words here now what students or the participants can do is quickly take the screenshot of this or better than that you can just go download this uh, application pinterest on which you will get uh, a lot many similar uh, images uh, 
uh, where there are correct pronunciations, spellings, and a lot many such things. So I would request you to take the screenshot quickly because I can't go on pronouncing each word here. But uh, yes, the pronunciations are given here. It will definitely help you. This is just an example I'm saying. We have to focus on this aspect as well. I just wanted you to realize this. Okay, if we do this, it is going to help us get that confidence. That's what is my point. I'm not here to teach the pronunciations. I know in one lecture, I cannot teach the pronunciation. Neither can I teach any other topic, but then I thought okay, if we know what to focus on, what uh, path to walk on, we can definitely reach the destination. So today I'm here just to tell what are the ways to improve English, what we can do from tomorrow to uh, improve English. Uh, that's what we are here for. Uh, I would like to uh, wind up this session uh, that we would discuss or take the questions from participants as well. So I would love if participants have some questions. Am I audible, sir? I would like participants to ask if they have some questions or we can just discuss for some time. Audible, sir. Okay. So we can open this session for participation. Uh, participation. Did I finish it a bit quickly? No, sir, not at all. <laughs> there are not a lot of things about we we can talk. So it will it will be a very monotonous session that uh, uh, if we stretch it for too long now that it will get monotonous for us and it is. Yes, a I way... understand, and that's why I say. Yes, 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 sir. So I request yes, participants if. Do you want any uh, guidance regarding how to develop the language skills? Sir is here to guide us all. See, I understand one thing. If this session was like a two-way participation was allowed, it could have been much more interesting. But yes, uh, it is a webinar. I had some things to tell and I told it. And uh, not everything can be kept or retained but at least some things and instructions that were given, uh, if they remember and practice it, definitely it is going to help everyone. So these were very important bits you told us. Even I also uh, used to uh, use the term epitome. I used to pronounce it epitome. So I, I got to know this, uh, 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 that it is a wrong pronunciation of this uh, right. noun. So it, it, is, uh, it is very... Uh, uh, a uh, fruitful uh, uh, aspect of uh, this session that we get to know that we generally uh, think that we are pronouncing certain words in a right manner, in a correct manner. So it is. it was very helpful focus, for us. Yes, uh, the point is I can't just keep on telling the words, but if we focus on that aspect, yes, yes. the point is it is going to help us and it is going to boost our confidence. Yes. Because the one thing that makes us conscious is the thought, whether I'm making some mistake. Yes, yes, if it yes. is stopping me from carrying on my conversation, if I have already prepared, I know what the correct thing is, right thing is, it is going to give me that confidence and then I will acquire the language very easily. Definitely, definitely, sir. So I guess there are no questions. Uh, participants, I think they are satisfied with what we have uh, equipped you, sir. What all tiny bits you have sensitized with us. That will surely going to help all of the participants and the panelists as well uh, to yeah. improve and evolve us to have a better communication and enhance our language skills. So I thank you, sir for giving us such a wonderful session. I, I hope and, it was uh, fruitful and 
yes sir yes sir yes sir definitely uh, and uh, i would say i must thank the institute uh, thank uh, dr bhushan and uh, ma'am i must thank you the principal of the college and the administration for inviting me uh, the two days uh, see i was 